It's an old Japanese folk tale about a young woman who is so busy with her chores during the day that she doesn't have time to go down to the well. So she has to go down at night. It so happens that it's a bright, moonlit night, and as she looks down into the well, she sees a face, the face of a young man, much, much handsomer than any she'd ever seen. And she's so t taken with it, she goes back home. All she can think about is how she will never get to marry a man that handsome. It makes her so sad that she refuses to eat food and she ends up just pining away to death. And then years later, a cat fell in the well, and so they had to dredge it out. And as they dredged out the well, you know what they found at the bottom? A mirror. This is a good symbol for the desire we have for sensual pleasures. The way we try to get sensual pleasure out of the body. It's all in our heads. The idea that the body is beautiful, or that the sensual pleasures we can get through the body, through eating and sleeping and sex, are really worth all the effort that goes into them. It's all in our heads. When you look at the actual facts of the matter, the pleasure is very evanescent. It comes and goes so quickly you can't really catch hold of it. And the things we have to do in order to get that pleasure are often demeaning. And they develop really bad habits in the mind. And the body itself, as the chant we had just now says, and we like to think of the body as beautiful, but what's actually there, if you really look at it carefully, there's really nothing that corresponds with our ideas of beauty. People hate that chant. I don't know how many times I've been asked not to chant that chant here at the monastery. People say, well, Either it's because they already have a bad image of their bodies and they don't have that reinforced, or else they say that they're beyond attachment to the body, so it's unnecessary. Of course, if it were unnecessary, why would they complain? And it's not the problem is really not with the body. The body does its functions. It needs a stomach, and it needs intestines, it needs all these things in order to function. The problem is, is we try to get the wrong kind of pleasure out of it. We look at it as a source of sensual pleasure, either through the things we can touch outside or the things we can experience, the pleasure that comes from eating, sleeping, having sex, or getting intoxicated. Some people find that mixing up of the brain signals when you get intoxicated. They find that really fun and enjoyable. But it's not the path to liberation, at least not taken in that way, which is why we need the medicine of this reflection to remind ourselves that the pleasure we get from it is all in, in our minds, and it doesn't last very long, and sometimes is followed by pain, regret. And it's also followed by really bad habits in the mind. In order to enjoy that, the body in this way, we have to be mindless and have to not be very alert. And it encourages our impatience. We want pleasure right now, regardless of the consequences. So it teaches us to be heedless. And the Buddha is not saying that the pursuit of pleasure is bad, or that the body can't provide pleasure. But the kind of pleasure that's actually helpful on the path is of a different sort.
And here it's useful to understand the distinction between sensuality and form. Sensuality, the Buddha defines as the passion for our intentions or the passion for our resolves. In other words, we're passionate for our sensual desires. We're much more attached to our desires than we actually are to the objects. And approaching the body from that perspective, we look at it for the central pleasures it has to offer. In terms of sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. But we also experience the body another way. What in the West we call the kinesthetic sense, the sense of the form of the body, how you feel it from inside. When you're sitting here, the fact that you know where your legs are, where your arms are, where your head is, the general shape of the body, that's form. And that provides, or has the potential of providing, a different kind of pleasure. But to develop that pleasure, instead of developing unskillful habits, actually requires skillful habits of the mind. It requires mindfulness, it requires alertness. requires ardency, lots of skillful qualities. This is why it's, this pleasure is part of the path, the pleasure of jhana, a strong absorption in the form of the body. This is why we work with the breath, so we learn how to take advantage of the potentials that this, the body experienced as form has to offer. These pleasures start simply with learning how to breathe in and breathe out in a way that feels good. Asking yourself what rhythm or texture of the breath, what rhythm or texture of the breath feels most gratifying right now? And where in the body does it feel most pleasurable? And then learning how to maintain that sense, and developing it into a sense of fullness and refreshment. One way of doing this is to notice which parts of the energy channels in your body do you tend to squeeze when you breathe in or breathe out? Can you breathe in and out without squeezing them? Just choose one and be intent on allowing it to stay open all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. You keep this up for a while, and there will be a, a sense of fullness. In fact, you find there are certain spots in the body when you keep this up, there's almost a sense you're drowning. But you're not. It's just that you're allowing part of this form of the body to experience an uninterrupted sense of ease. The drowning sensation comes from the fact that someplace in the mind there's a signal that's been imprinted that when you breathe in, this part of the body has to get squeezed, or when you breathe out, it has to get squeezed. And you're fighting against that signal, so it's going to take a while for you to get used to it. But once you do, you find there's a sense of fullness there, and then you can start thinking of it spreading around to different parts of the body. John Lee gives the image of waking up the elements of the body. In other words, becoming sensitive to all the different areas where energy flows in the body, where it's been blocked, what you can do to unblock it, and trying to keep yourself as fully aware of as many of these spots as possible as you can all at once. Because when you do that, it really transfixes you in the present moment. Because all too often the mind, even when it's with a breath, 
is sending out its feelers to find someplace else to go. But if you've got all the feelers occupied with different parts of the body, there's no place they can go. They're all occupied. They're all involved in this process of trying to be as fully aware of the form of the body as you can. This is one very important way of gladdening the mind in the practice, because to stick with the practice you do need a sense of pleasure. And it has to be impressive, because otherwise the mind is going to start sending out its feelers to think about other pleasures that it's missing right now. All the places you could be going, all the things you could be doing, but you're not. You're stuck here. without air conditioning, totally subject to the vagaries of the weather. As you spend all your time thinking about what you can't do right now, it gets very dry. But if you can provide yourself with a sense of pleasure that comes from within like this, a sense of well-being that you can carry around with you, it can make that Your obsession for the time being is how, once you get a sense of well-being and fullness in the body, how much can you carry it around? This kind of pleasure is actually part of the path, and it's an essential part of the path. So uh, deriving this kind of pleasure from the body is perfectly fine. So this is where we have that reflection on the unattractive side of the body. Not to say that the body is bad or that the search for pleasure is bad, but simply we're looking in the wrong place. We're trying to get a pleasure out of the body that the body can't really provide, or can provide only in a fleeting way, but with lots of drawbacks. So work on developing this approach to the body, approaching it from within, familiarizing yourself with the, the different elements or properties, the, the warmth of the body, the energy flow, the coolness, the solidity. Learning how to play with them in ways that provide a sense of pleasure and variety. you find that it develops good qualities of the mind. You become more mindful, more alert. Uh, you're developing the qualities that eventually will be conducive to insight. It will allow you to see that even in this sense of the fullness and ease of the body, there's an element of stress. It might even lead you to Start exploring the formless pleasures there are, because you begin to realize that your sense of the form of the body is a perception. There's a metal label that tells you this is where the body ends, this is the shape of the body. It has these limits. And as long as the breath is coming in and going out, the movement of the breath through the body tends to reinforce those perceptions. But as the breath gets more and more refined, you find that you can rely more and more simply on the, the buzz of the energy flow in the different channels of the body without having to breathe in and breathe out. This is partly because they get more and more connected, your pores open up, and partly because the brain is using less oxygen. The in and out movement of the breath gets more and more refined, more and more subtle, until it finally stops and you're just sitting here very still. Your awareness is still filling the body. The breath energy is still. It's all connected. And you find that you can let that perception of the form of the body lapse. You find that it will lapse on its own, but you begin to notice that you don't have to stir it up again, because there's nothing in terms of the movement of the breath that will stir it up.
that's when you're really ready for the perception of formlessness. I think of all the sensations in the body just as little droplets, little points of sensation. And there's space penetrating all those points, going between them. And that space is connected with the space outside. So you're not conscious of any limitation on that, how far that space could go. And that provides us pleasure that's even more subtle. And again, while you do this, you don't want to analyze it too much, just stay with that, that perception and the sensation of space. But as you reflect on it, after doing this many times, you begin to see you've learned an important lesson about perception. As long as you're using the body as a foundation for sensual ideas, it's going to require a lot of mental activity. You begin to see that sensual thoughts are these little blips that appear in the form of the body, and you have the choice of going with them or not, sort of stepping into their world or not. It's like a little cyst of sensual world appearing in the form of the body. A little seed that you then water, and it will turn into a world that you go into. That's one way you could approach it. Or you can see it simply as a disturbance in the various properties of form. It's like having a computer. You can type with the keys, or you can press a function key, and then the keys do different things. These little sensations of the body either can stay simply as form sensations, or they become the the basis for sensual worlds. You begin to realize that those sensual worlds take a lot of energy and don't provide much in terms of genuine satisfaction. So you see the power of perception, the labels you put on things. And if you start training yourself to use the proper labels and can maintain enough mindfulness and alertness and concentration. to keep them in mind with the right amount of effort, not too much, not too little. You can touch whole new level, levels of pleasure in the body, which are actually part of the path. So try to acquaint yourself with the pleasure that the body can provide when it's approached from this side. As form, rather than as a source of sensual pleasure. And you'll see that your whole notion of what pleasure is will change radically, and also your notion of what pleasure can do will change radically. And instead of being a form of intoxication, it actually clears away the intoxication. And gets the mind more solidly on the path. 